Well, that's all of them. Now, of course, we know the volunteers do. But those who stay at home, and those who are left at home sometimes for hours at a time, we tend to forget their contribution. So I'm here for the coordinators of Atzal Asli. To my left, Mark Rose, which I was the work with, and Ray Cannon, who's not here tonight. We extend a great big yashikai to all of you for coming to honor these special people. I want to tell you a small story. I joined Atzal in 1973, when Platypus was founded. I was studying there in the color of Mary Yeshiva, and there was no Atzal in Platypus. I want to show you how far we've come. The North Solo Flappish, Barfuck existed, Williamsburg existed, the North Solo Flappish at the time. And our regular school grandmother, the Tzadik of Rafa, called a few of us into his office, his room, four members, and said, It's time for our solo. The city does not have our solo, as we know, it's brought down on the Muslim's farm and the books of ethics cannot exist. And our solo began. How did it begin? There was a fellow who should be well. The founder of our name was Hershey Weber. Hershey Weber, the short little fellow, still a short little fellow, she's looking well. And what happened was, he said, You want our cell? You got it. Come down to a room in Miri Shiva, where we started, I was studying at Miri Shiva, come down to room 35 in Miri Shiva High School. The members are ready to start our cell. You start our cell. We were there, we didn't speak the night before. We come into the classroom, room 35 of Chaim Prujansky's classroom, I remember like yesterday. He's going back 1973, it's quite a few years. And we come into the room, in walks of Hershey Weber, the floor is broken. It's a shtokana, it's a kanakta, it's a brachana, that means really a bitch. Um, yeah, Hatsala asks me thanks. And he says, here guys, here's stickers. Go around the neighborhood, here are stickers to all the people. 387-1750 was the number then. And here's Jack's good time. He says, well, what do we do? He hands us the American First Aid book. I read the first one. Hey, read the book, and you'll be ready. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating. He said, what? This is four guys living in cold in Mary Shiva. Read the book. What's the problem? What happens if somebody has chest pains? Turn on the oxygen. We, we tried to get a special key in those days, if you remember. A little wrench, we opened it up. What if a guy breaks his leg? Give him oxygen. <laughs> he has a headache? Give him oxygen. And he was gone about an hour. We need to decide we didn't sleep. We're hitting on stickers to people, what do we know? We studied the book, we went. There was no EMT test yet in those days. The course of emergency medical conditions did not exist yet. We studied and studied and studied. And you know what? I saw the flap today as a tour of members. And then we came to Farakhwood. That's all of our is covered the five towns. Maybe in Shetta means the distance. This is the largest neighborhood being covered by that's all in the entire New York City metropolitan area. <laughs> and you know why it happened? I want to tell you why it happened. It happened because not only the members said they could do it, but the wives of the members, the wonderful Sheikh Haya said, go do it. And the children said, it's okay. I remember one time, we all remember, every Atzal member could tell you the story, in the middle of the place I stayed there. And Atzal the floor comes in. And Atzal the man has to run out. It's not fun. Kids are preparing for a month. The Manishtana, Kiddush, Kaddish, Urchatz. And the wives are cooking for a month. And Atzal the member runs out of the house. And the wife says, go, do that, it's more important. So we're here today to say, of a little tiny organization, you, the Shechal, you wonderful women and children and parents of our members, you have created the greatest Kiddush Kodesh of mine in this neighborhood. Thank you all very, very, very much. <laughs> to give us some different chizot, and then we'll be followed by some presentations to tonight's honorees. We had the great success of having a very distinguished rabbi, distinguished rabbi, when it comes to very, very delicate and serious in Yemen issues of life and death, literally, the man we in town all, all turn to for guidance and expertise is our guest speaker tonight. My first ask, guest Rabbi Flam, to address us tonight.
Perishas, Sidiyim, and then Hala Hatsala, my dear distinguished colleague, our Bendishita, ladies and gentlemen, who have come tonight to participate in our Hatsala's barbecue. For many, many years, having the schools to live in this neighborhood, in the world of the community, and interacting with all the different parts of the community, the part of this specific five towns that always amazed me was the Hatzal. I want to share with you very quickly something that I personally know, something I personally feel, because I myself have had sometimes the circumstances to have to call that solo to my own home. And therefore, I want to share with you some remarks tonight that are not based upon philosophical possibilities, but based upon realities that I've experienced myself with Brother Beyonce. When it comes to the concept of the Kuach Nefesh, Chazal tell us from the Kain Nefesh Achas, Kinokiyam Olamole, that every human life has infinite value. And therefore, when it comes to halacha, the concerns for Kayesha are preeminent, as the Shavonarach defines this in the Shabbos. Chazal have many makaras that define the parameters of the Chiyab of Rafua, Rafi Arape, Hashibosullah, Hashabas Vayda Saduk, Losamad al all of them come together to define the halacha parameters of medical involvement to save human life. But what is quite interesting is besides the technical halacha mandate to be an expert when it comes to treating people medically and to have the proper education license in order to practice the medicine you're practicing, besides all of that according to Shulchan Aruch, there's another dimension which I want to highlight tonight. The Rambam is quite interesting. In Hilfus Shabbos and Hilfus Malachim, we define the halachic parameters of the Pesach Nefesh, points out that besides the technicals involved in knowing what you're doing medically and being sensitive halachically what you're able to do on Shabbos and Yantif, there's another dimension of being involved in the Hatzal. And that is the attitude, the personality traits, that must be possessed by people involved in medical care. The Rambam says very explicitly, when it comes to practicing medicine, the person involved has to be a bar achamin. You have to be a person who has mercy. You have to be a chesed, somebody who's involved in loving kindness. You have to be a shalom, a person of peace. Derech shalom. The Rambam then goes further than to say, when it comes to practicing medicine involved in that type of chesed, you have to emulate Hashem. Turn Hashem akar, achem adachar, maslav, you have to emulate Hashem's midas as they are portrayed in the Torah. Gracher dachenom b'chol, this is their shalom, to make sure that when a person is acting as a medical professional, you're able to see not only their expertise in knowing what they're doing, and feel comfortable about that, but you have to feel the person that's involved in your medical care has an incredible Abbas Israel, Abbas Abriyots. You feel their chesed, you feel their achamin, you feel their dachay shalom, you feel they are coming here as an emissary of HaKadosh Baruch Hu to be the shluch of the rachmana. You feel the sense of shrina, and therefore that itself besides the medical help that they give you, gives you an ability to feel that they'll succeed, gives you a feeling of hope, gives you a feeling of sincerity that alleviates your tension and makes the medical care psychologically, physiologically very, very effective. It's interesting to note that where Moshe finds is that Hatzalat Ibrach and the other tzaddikim who were asked about the creation of Hatzalat, when it came to defining the parameters, 
But he emphasizes this chuba, not only the fact that the person has to be an expert in the actual medical care, not only the person has to be an expert in the halachas of Shabbos and Yom Kippur to be very meticulous to make sure that everything is done to halacha when it comes to practicing these activities on Shabbos and Yom Kippur. But he basically also emphasizes the personality trait of the matzil and the members of the Hatzal. And he points out the reason he gave this hetra of Hatzal, even though there's a concept of secular EMTs, is because when a person is a ben Torah, you've learned Torah your entire life, you've been sensitized to the concept of the importance of human life, momentary human life, you've been sensitized to the concept of having compassion and love for another human being. And the quality with which you practice your EMT services, because of these specific qualities, these specific traits, this specific type of training, makes you more efficient, more effective and more capable of doing what you have to do as quickly as possible to save human life. I want to say upon our Hatzal in our community that it is a very unique group of individuals. And Baruch Hashem, I know a great many members of the Hatzal from the Holodah. I will tell you, besides the fact that they learn the Halachos when it comes to Pibach Nefesh very diligently, they have continuous ongoing shiruba when it comes to what's halakha permissible or not. And this sensitivity is passed on to the members of Atzala to be a member. You have to have these sensitivities, the Yerushalayim, to be sensitive to these sensitivities. But besides doing all of that, and quite obviously having expertise in what they're doing, there's a certain personality trait I have seen that is represented in all the members of Atzala that I ever met. And that is you feel when they come to your house a special pain, a special chesed, a special rachamim, a concept of shalom, abbas Israel, they make you feel incredibly comfortable. And by giving you that feeling, they bring you to where they have to bring you. But it brings down the tension. It gives incredible sipuk to the soul who sit from the time they come to the house to the time they take you to the hospital, it makes our Hatzalah an incredible experience to the level, I would say, of a Kiddush and Shemayim, as was mentioned before. Tonight, however, as Rabbi mentioned, the purpose of this assemblage is to give recognition to other members of Hatzalah who we usually don't see. And that is the wives and the children in our community that allow their husbands to participate in this 24-7. As a Rav who deals with the couples, I can tell you the following. That when a father is called an Atzala call on Shabbos and Yom Tif, think of that for a second. What about the only Shabbos that no longer is going to be now because the father has to leave? What about the Simchas Yom What about the Shalom Bayis? Despite all of that, the women and the Shechayo of these men are such spiritual personalities that they're willing to sacrifice momentarily their own Shabbos, their Simchas Yom even parts of their Shalom Bayis to allow their husbands to go out into the field and to save human life. This is something that is simply incredible. I know for a fact, because one of my children here tonight, my son Akibola, who's part of the Brooklyn branch, B59, I've been in his house on Chapel Siyamka when he gets a call, and I see what happens when he runs out on a moment's notice, in the middle of whatever course he's holding to take care of what he has to take care of. The reaction of his Aishas Kyle and the children is simply remarkable. This could only be possible because of the Hashkafah Satara, that all of our children are given in yeshiva, which ultimately impacts upon the young men who take the Ahrayas of the Matzah Nefashas, and the women who allow their husbands to be involved with it, it's their Hashkafah Satara that has sensitized them to the point that they themselves, not only the men who go out into the field,
But the women likewise represent the concept in their own life of individuals who are involved in concepts of rachamim, chesed, v'shalom. I therefore want to give all of the members of the Mishpacha recognition this evening and tell you that you are a living Kiddush Hashem Mishpacha allowing this to take place. Hashem should give each and every one of you an incredible barachim in Hashemayim for allowing your husbands to do what they do and you are a partner. Chazal says Kalam Asa is greater than the Osa. Since you allow it, you facilitate it, you have a chalik in the Hatzalas Tafashas. I want to end my remarks with the bracha of Moshe Feinstein's Hatzalas the bracha gave when it came to the inception of Hatzalah. In his beautiful Ksav, he said the following. He said, that those who are involved in the multifaceted concept of this Hatzalah, which involves Hatzalas Tafashas, which involves Gamilas Chasadim, which involves Beaker Cholim. What Hashem should do is Baruch HaMishnayim Bechol HaBrach HaShemetara Hashem should give you Hatzlach HaBrach HaBechol HaSayim We're saying on behalf of all those assembled, those brothers should be the queen amongst all the Mishpachas that participate in Hatzlach those who go out in the field, those who stay home, this is the Brach we give you this evening. you and to motivate you and tell you to go. And when you know that she's proud, you can donate and it makes everything 
that much easier. I'm happy for him to go. I'm happy for him to help people. A call come in at a time where I'm not sure if I want to go or could go, and my older kids will say, I'll watch the kids and go. Once I hear the sound of the radio, the first thing that comes into my mind, Daddy, go, Daddy, go, Daddy, go, Daddy, go. <laughs> we always talk about how it's our old brotherhood, how our husbands are known by their members, not their names. It's a beautiful thing to see how hotel members take care of each other and look out for one another. They really consider each other like members of a family. Just seeing them together as a chava, just going out there and doing something for the club, that's a tremendous feeling, a good feeling that you have, that you're a part of something that's very special. When I pass the all, I feel like it's my home and just seeing men zooming down Central Avenue when I pull over, I feel like, yeah, like, I'm on their team. Like, I feel like I'm part of it. We all feel this privilege together that my father's running down on the call to help somebody else. They develop a sense of pride in their father that he's the hero who steps in when people need help. Gives me the opportunity to feel like I'm helping other people through him. When he um, comes back and says, he convinced this elderly man to go to the hospital who was in a good condition, it's just like, that's my man, you know, it's strong, that's us. It's an amazing feeling to know that he just saved a choking child, or we gave up our taxi time knowing that he just brought someone back to life who was in cardiac arrest. The whole purpose of being here is to help other people. When your teammate is doing just that, there's no better feeling. I tell my son also, my husband leaves, he's going to help somebody. He runs to the window, he likes to see the lights going on, he likes to see the bus, he likes to take his radio. Our daughter is seeing us all in action. When she she sees Daddy run out the door, she runs to the balcony to watch his lights go, and she says, woo, woo, you know, it's beautiful. We're giving over to our kids how important it is to help other people in need. We want our kids to know that chesed is not always convenient. You do it because it has to be done, whatever it is. Whether it's middle of the night, during the day, just running to help somebody who we may not even know. And they walk away with that understanding how we have to give back to our community. And I think they see me standing at home and supporting him, and I hope that they're learning that lesson, and I hope that they value that. Thank you. 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 Sometimes you from a hot call at night, and it's something that just hits home to you for whatever reason it is. Maybe it's a neighbor or it's a family member. I've seen my husband personally affected by some calls. He'll come home from a cardiac arrest where someone's just, you know, passed away and he he takes it very hard. I try to encourage him, you know, that he did a good thing and you do your best and things are not in our hands. It's an amazing feeling to come home to your family and have your wife and children come for you and give you whatever support that you need at that moment. My kids really get excited when I go on a call and when I come back they're always asking me how's everybody, I hope everyone's okay. I'd just like to thank them for showing their support. Whether it's at 6.30 at the dinner table or whether it's at 4 o'clock in the morning, I really have to be knock your toe to my wife who allows me to run out and just drop what I'm doing. For you know, waiting for me Friday night to eat when I run out on call. For having unbelievable understanding and patience so that I can go take care of those people in need. I can't tell you how many times I've been stopped in the supermarket or on the street or by people I know, people I don't know, and tell me that my husband's phenomenal. People will come over to me and say, oh, your husband's just in my house, and they'll tell me stories. It makes you feel proud. My husband's in Hatsawa. It's an amazing thing. And every person that he saves, you're really part of it. They get all the scars. Some days I do go out in the morning. I don't come back till at night. Busy with a new ambulance, busy with the oxygen delivery, and my wife gets all the credit. It's not just me going on Hatsawa. Maybe I'm the face of the Hatsawa in our family. But she's the one who's equally behind it as much as me. I always value all those women behind all those men on Hatsawa. The community should understand that when, when they are calling, members are coming to their houses. Somebody is leaving their family, leaving their wife, leaving their kids behind. But our wives, our family is happy to give us up at that time to come and help you. They didn't train to be EMTs. They didn't train to be paramedics or doctors. They don't have the technical skills necessary. And yet... Every time the daddy saves a life, they're saving a life. And every time the daddy is doing a chesed, they're doing a chesed. Because it's their mitzvah. Without them, daddy will be dead. Number is RV6. I guess 
Rafa de Sá e o 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 Rafa de Sá which is what makes us run. That's without the ambulances, we wouldn't be here today. And we're very grateful to these families. So, what are you? We are first one over here. Let me have a special presentation afterwards. Okay, so first I'd like to call upon the Sharf family who have made it to the presentation of ambulances. Extraordinary person who we all love dearly. Which institution, including the Shiva that I work with, didn't need Richie Lang all the time? I didn't, I didn't know the last name because I knew the last name because it was all Richie to us. Richie was a very special person because when he put his entire Shama. 
His entire soul, every function that anyone in this town needed, particularly that soul. And he loved that soul organization. He would do anything for us, for that soul. And it showed. He and his wife were a special team. When the, when the news came, it was difficult for all of us to handle. The funeral was extraordinary to see the outpouring of emotions of this very, very special person. Yet, we believe strongly that the good deeds of a person live on. When one does good deeds in this world, the reward is plentiful. I wish he did so many good deeds in his lifetime that we are honored tonight that we can pay tribute to this wonderful man, Mr. Richard Lang. Before I present to you tonight, uh, my dear colleague, Mark, say a few words. In all the years that I've been assisting Werner Hatzala, I've never gotten up to the podium to speak. Uh, not much in public speaking, uh, but we all went through a tremendous, tremendous loss. And I don't think the general public or the general firm public out there knows what Richie has done, both for Hatzala and many, many shooters out there. Um, tonight's function, the whole setup, the whole way we run this entire program, was worked out between Richie and myself for over many years of practice. A special thank you has to go out to the family because what Richie would do, Richie never said no to me, ever. In 30 years that I worked with him, he never said no to me. But when the word Hatzala came up, it was, everything was off the chart. Both, I have to mention Stu Yachman, who was here, who was uh, Richie's boss and friend, um, have opened up the doors to Sands, and when it came to Hatzala, when it came to tonight's function, um, Anything we wanted, both financially and any other form that it could help us, we never heard the word no. When I received the phone call that Richie had collapsed here in the sands, if I made the arrangements to send Hatala there, I just thought it was a little bit ironic that we would come at the last section and I knew the guys would get here and I knew Richie was going to be fine. Unfortunately, I touched far for well, God had different plans, and we'll never understand his plans. The only comfort I took out of it is I knew that he was getting the best care, both when he was still with us and after us. And that was the only comfort I could take, even though I was not here, it was actually quite a distance from here, but I knew he was being taken care of. And I can't thank Richie for everything he's done, but at least I can say thank you to his family. And on behalf of the organization, I'd like to call up his wife, Ellen, Lance, Allison, and Leonard, and of course, Stuart Yacht. I'd like to begin by the time I want to mention um, someone who does not want to be mentioned, Bob Limesider, who is the general manager of the Sands, and everybody knows Bob for many years. He's sitting in the back of the hall. He's actually not in the back of the hall. Standing right to my right, who again, same thing, 30 plus years that I'm working with, and uh, tonight is a perfect example of word no when it comes to our tell when you're I While we're waiting, we're going to continue along. Just like to read the dedication of Black. It says, The memory of Richie Lang. Richie was a friend and confidant of Hatzala for many years. His involvement with our annual dinner was always with the utmost courtesy and professionalism. Like the entire staff of the Sands, Richie served as a model businessman, always putting his clients and community first. His presence will be missed. Presented to the Hatzala Annual Barbecue Dinner, May 3, 2015, Hatzala, Rockway, Nassau County, Mark Rose, Lovey, Los Canada, and Shadows of World Woods Coordinators.
the song. Thank you so much. Please put, make sure you're dressed 